Let's look at another conformation or shape of the ethane molecule. So in order for us to look at this next shape of ethane, we have to talk a little bit about something called free rotation of bonds. All single bonds, such as this carbon-carbon single bonds, are free to rotate, meaning that this molecule can twist at the position of the carbon-carbon single bond. Hopefully you're still holding your model of ethane from the, from the previous video. And what I want you to do is use your left hand to hold this whole chunk of the molecule, the carbon and its three hydrogens. And I want you to use your other hand, your right hand, to hold the other portion of the molecule, the CH3. And what I want you to do is physically twist, twist this half of the molecule in one direction, twist this half of the molecule in the other direction, clockwise, and one of them go counterclockwise. And so you will be able to see that you can turn one end of this molecule like a propeller or like a fan. It can freely twist and rotate without any changes to the, the actual molecule other than changing its shape. So what I want you to do is take your model and I want you to twist that carbon-carbon bond. I'm going to represent that twisting motion by drawing this sort of turning arrow. That's my way of saying I want you to twist that carbon-carbon bond. And I want you to twist it so that, again, your, your carbons are going to be, you know, side by side, one hydrogen in the same plane as those two carbons. And I want you to put a second hydrogen pointing up. So it's gonna be, both of these hydrogens are gonna be pointing in the same direction on the same side of the molecule. And I want all four of these atoms to be parallel to your desk or your table. So these four, if you, if you were to pull the other hydrogens off of the molecule, you'd be able to lay all four of these flat. When you do that, when you've twisted correctly, you should have two hydrogens down here that are both sticking up at you, and then two hydrogens back here that are sticking away from you. And again, you haven't changed this molecule. If we could go back to the morbid example I gave over here, all that you've done is basically kicked one of its legs up in the air. You have not pulled its head off and reattached its head to one of your feet. You've just turned that molecule without breaking any of its bonds. So now what I want you to do is draw a Newman projection of this particular shape or conformation of the molecule. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cite down this particular bond and we're going to draw what we see. This is our front carbon and our front carbon looks the same as it did in the last drawings. We have a hydrogen sticking up and we have two hydrogens sticking down, one to the left, one to the right. Now let's get ready to draw our back carbon. Now if you've got this thing lined up really good, if, you're, if you've done a really good job of lining it up and holding it really well and looking at it really well, your back hydrogen should be literally behind all of the front hydrogen. So these guys right here should be hiding behind these three front hydrogens right there. Now obviously we can't draw that on the paper. So the way that, the way that we will draw it is to just kind of put it barely off to the side and say, hey, that hydrogen is hanging out back there. All of these hydrogens are hanging out in the back. They're there, but you know, there's no way for us to draw it perfectly behind the other one. So this is our Newman projection for this particular conformation of ethane. Let's talk about the dihedral angle. And this is gonna be a good chance for us to practice. What is the dihedral angle asking us about? The dihedral angle is asking about focusing on two atoms. So let's say these two hydrogens right here, which are right here in our Newman projection those two hydrogen atoms that are separated from each other by two atoms. What is the dihedral angle between these two guys? Well, the Newman projection is not the best way to look at that because the way that we draw it, it does portray that there is some angle right here. But remember that they are literally stacked one right on top of the other. So what is that angle? the dihedral angle be, be, uh, between those two blue hydrogens, there isn't one. If you've done it correctly, they should literally be stacked one on top of the other. 
This particular confirmation of ethane is called the eclipsed confirmation. And its name should make sense to you because the hydrogens are stacking in front of each other or they are eclipsing each other. The eclipsed conformation has a dihedral angle of zero degrees. Let's go back and look at a picture of the staggered conformation. The staggered conformation with a dihedral angle of 60 degrees, I didn't talk about the name, where that name comes from, but now that you've seen the eclipsed conformation, the staggered name probably makes sense to you because in the staggered conformation, the hydrogens are staggered with respect to each other compared to the eclipsed conformation where, where they are stacked right on top of each other. So the last thing that we're going to talk about with regards to the conformation of ethane is the energy associated with these two different shapes that ethane can take. As the ethane molecule is freely rotating around its carbon-carbon bond, sometimes it takes this shape right here, and sometimes it takes this shape right here. Now, as you're holding that molecule in your hand, and it's easier to visualize this if you're literally holding a model, you will see that not only is the dihedral angle zero for this particular conformation, the distance between the hydrogen atoms, in fact, any two hydrogen atoms in the uh, eclipsed conformation is smaller than the distance between hydrogen atoms in a staggered conformation. Because those hydrogen atoms are close together in the eclipsed conformation, this particular shape of the molecule is a high energy conformation. Eclipsed is our high energy conformation. And likewise, staggered is our low energy conformation. And the word that we use to describe the position of the hydrogen atoms in a high energy conformation, like an eclipsed conformation, is called steric hindrance. Steric hindrance is the term that we use to describe a conformation or a situation where the atoms are closer together than they need to be or too close together. If this bond were to just twist a little bit, these hydrogen atoms could get further apart and they would have less negative interaction. So steric hindrance is crowding or atoms coming closer than they need to in a molecule. We'll talk about steric hindrance a lot because it ends up being a really big deal 